Making a cocktail for yourself once in a while is certainly an easy task. But as soon as you got guests coming over and everyone wants the same cocktail, all that measuring for a Seabreeze cocktail, which consists of 2 parts vodka, 4 parts cranberry juice and 2 parts grapefruit juice, can be quite annoying. That is why I created this crude but functional cocktail machine, which automatically pours all the liquids in a glass after you entered the amount of each of them in milliliters. Now my machine is programmed to pump out Seabreeze cocktails one after the other, but by simply changing the bottles and adjusting a bit of Arduino code, you can pretty much create any cocktail you like with this machine. So without wasting any more time, let me show you how it works and how you can make your own. Let's get started. This video is sponsored by JLC PCB. Upload your Gerber files today to get high quality PCBs for ridiculously low prices. Currently even without shipping costs. And make your projects look more professional. If I open up the side of my cocktail machine, we can pretty much see all the electronic components it consists of. We got a DC jack for the power inputs an LCD to present all the important milliliter information, a rotary encoder with push button to alter those quantities and start the mixing process, an Arduino Nano as the brains of the organization, a load cell which acts as a weight measuring system, three peristaltic pumps to move the liquids and two L298N dual full bridge drivers to control the motors. And while I talked about pretty much all of those components in previous videos of mine, I never got the chance to showcase peristaltic pumps. Now I got mine from eBay and if we remove the four mounting screws that hold the plastic construction to the motor and thus remove it, we can see that we are basically dealing with a 12 volt DC motor. The plastic structure on top of it simply consists of a rotor with three rollers which after inserting a flexible silicone tube, reattaching the construction to the motor shaft and powering the motor, compresses the silicone tube. This deformation of the tube creates pressure which forces liquid inside the tube to move forwards. And of course, if we would change the polarity of the DC motor, the liquid would flow backwards. Another important aspect for our cocktail machine is that this kind of pump delivers a precise amount of milliliters of liquid per second, but we will try that out in detail later. For now, let's get rid of the silicon tube from the cellar and replace it with a food safe silicon tube instead. I got mine with a diameter of 10 millimeters, which is certainly the maximum for this kind of pump. But anyway, after closing up the plastic construction once again, it was time to connect the DC motor to the OUT1 and OUT2 terminal of the L298 breakout board. And after connecting the 5V terminal to 5V, the ground terminal to ground and the 12V terminal to 15V, since there's quite a big voltage drop across the IC, we can connect either in 1 or in 2 to 5V depending on which direction the motor should rotate. And once I was certain that the main electronics work like they were supposed to, I drew a rough sketch of the enclosure for the cocktail machine. After then measuring all the required electronic components, I created proper dimensions for all the required pieces of wood and even a small guide on how to glue them together. So I brought in a piece of beech plywood with those dimensions and started drawing the outlines of all the 12 necessary pieces of wood. Once I was done, I clamped the plywood to the workbench in my garage and started cutting out the pieces with a jigsaw. Now I'm certainly not an expert when it comes to woodworking, as you will clearly see later, but after one and a half hours with the jigsaw, the result of the 12 wood pieces was certainly not too shabby. And after treating all the rough edges with a file, I continued by marking the center line of my bottom piece in order to position the 1 kg load cell in the middle of it in order to mark its mounting holes. As soon as they were created with a 4mm drill, 
I countersank them on the opposite side so that the mounting screws will later sit flush with the surface. Then I continued by transferring the remaining two mounting holes onto the center line of the top piece of the scale and welded two mounting holes as well. Next, I added spacers to the load cell and secured the two pieces of wood to it with M4 screws. Now, I don't want to bore you with the details on how and where to create cutouts exactly, since I pretty much only use different sized drill bits, keyhole saws and files. And you can also find out where I positioned the electronics components in my plans for this project. So, let's rather focus on entertaining moments like after I finished mounting the LCD and accidentally enlarged the hole from a rotary encoder to 12mm. It was not a tragedy though, since superglue and two component adhesive can nowadays secure everything and a knob can hide the way to big cutout. And speaking of two component adhesive, after securing the DC jack with it in place, I test fitted the pumps, marked the mounting holes as well as three 10mm holes next to them for the silicone tube and drilled them all. It is important though that the holes for the silicone tubes are a tight fit, which includes the three holes in the piece of wood above the glass. Now that all cutouts were created, I originally planned to attach them to one another with wood glue and nails. But since that plan failed pretty quickly, I'd rather use super glue to firstly create the cocktail maker shape temporarily and then added an additional layer of wood glue for stability. But of course, make sure to not glue the top piece of the scale to the other wood pieces. And before not being able to reach the electronic components inside the final cocktail maker construction, it is important to solder long enough wires to all of them. So that once the gluing process was complete, we can solder the wires to its corresponding Arduino pins, like I described it in this schematic. Like always, you can find the schematic, along with the other plans of this project, pictures and even a parts list in the video description. Once the electrical wiring was complete, I installed the three silicone tubes inside the machine, secured them in the corresponding pump, cut the tubes at an appropriate length, tied the three tubes together above the glass with a zip tie, pushed the electronics inside the enclosure and mounted the remaining piece of wood to the enclosure with a hinge, which means that after adding velcro tape to the side of the housing, the mechanical construction was also complete. Now as a first test sketch, I created a simple piece of code that can select each pump and turn it on or off whenever I push the rotary encoder button. After uploading it and powering the circuit with a power supply that offers 15 volts and 5 amps, I positioned each pump's silicone tube in the corresponding beverage, started each pump individually and measured how much milliliters they moved per second. Now the results of the three pumps were pretty close to one another, but just imagine if you have a syrup like liquid, there the speeds would be slower. So, with those new information in mind, I created the final sketch for the Arduino, which in a nutshell follows this functional principle. Once the start button is activated, the scale zeros and pump 1 starts moving liquid. As soon as liquid fills the glass and the scale notices that, a counter starts, which allows the previously entered amount of milliliters to enter the glass. Once that timer is over though, pump 1 deactivates. The system waits for 2 seconds, zeroes the scale and then activates pump 2. Once again, as soon as liquid 2 fills the glass, the scale notices that, starts timer 2 and then deactivates pump 2 once the delay is over. This madness then continues until all three pumps deliver their beverage milliliters and I can get plastered. And just like that, you can create your own cocktail machine. Since my version is a woodworking nightmare, utilizes two thick tubes which causes vibrations and could definitely use some more pumps for wider drink variety, there's plenty of room for improvements. So I hope you give a project like this a try. As always, I hope you enjoyed watching this video and maybe even learned something new along the way. If so, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. 
consider supporting me through Patreon to keep such videos coming. Stay creative and I will see you next time.